I think we need to talk Decacar. What's up guys, this is Blue Devil with Overclock.net. Today I have a 7900X in the house. Yeah, pretty beastly DECA core. All right, let's run through some specs of this DECA core CPU. So again, it's a DECA core with 20 threads, so two threads per core. Base clock's at 3.3 gigahertz, with a turbo clock being at 4.3 gigahertz. You have a turbo turbo clock at 4.5 gigahertz. So this bests the 6950X in every which way for $700 less. It's still running 140 watts. Maximum memory supported by this bad boy is 128 gigabytes. Maximum memory type is uh, DDR4-2666. However, uh, motherboard manufacturers do support higher than that through overclocking. Um, it does support four ECC memory slots pro, uh, supported as well too. PCI Express lanes is limited to 44 uh, PCI Express lanes. so. Most of the time, that's not going to be a huge issue if you're running two 16x slot cards in your motherboard. Most X299 motherboards support Crossfire and SLI, so if you're running two 1080 Ti's or 1080's, you will be running 32 um, of those 44 slots. Take a few more up for NVMe drives and things like that, you'll probably be just fine with the highest end model. Case in point though, you will be running into some issues if you have the 7820X, I, remember, I think that it one's at 28 lanes. So not any different than the 5820K and the, uh, I think it's the 6800K uh, from um, Haswell E and Broadwell E. So the socket has changed a little bit. It still uses the same mounts for your um, AIO coolers and your water coolers of the 2011 socket, but it's now the 2066 socket. So Optane is supported. Uh, Turbo Boost Technology 3.0, Turbo Boost Technology 2.0, hyper threading, virtualization, um, Intel 64, all that jazz is all included in there as well too. Does the normal consumer need a 10 core CPU chip? No. <laughs> but it's sure freaking awesome to hold in my hands. So I'm going to be putting this through the paces. I would love for this to get up to 4.7, 4.8, oh my god, 5 gigahertz. but. Uh, with this many cores, I'm not expecting a whole ton in the overclocking. Um, I will be running this in a water-cooled setup. I want to know how fast I can get this chip. This chip is going to be in the main rendering PC for Overclock.net's channel, so it's going to be producing all of the content from here on out. So hopefully I can get more content out to you a little bit sooner. So, But just a beast of a CPU. I can't wait to install it. So I'm going to install it in uh, the Rajin Tech Asterion Classic. Uh, that's a tempered glass case. Just for now, I want to see how this is all going to go with. And then a X299 Tai Chi uh, motherboard from ASRock. So let's quit talking and let's get building.
right, so the two systems I tested today was the 7900X system on the X299 Tai Chi motherboard from ASRock running Crucial Ballistics Elite 3200 uh, memory. Uh, that was clocked at 3200 running the very same Samsung 950 Pro NVMe M.2 SSD. I just swapped them over. Um, speaking of which, with the other motherboard, the other test system is going to consist of the AMD Ryzen 7 1700 on the Crosshair 6 Hero uh, motherboard, again with the NVMe drive just swapped over. Both test systems had a GTX 1080 Founders Edition uh, just swapped over for consistency. Um, and then both in the overclock test, the 7900X was clocked up to 4.5 gigahertz with 1.3 volts. Uh, and then the Ryzen 7 1700 was used to 4 gigahertz. That's the max I can find it stable with the 4 gigahertz profile on the Crosshair 6 Hero. So that was running about 1.35 volts as well too consistently. So uh, without further ado, let's get to those benchmarks. All right, the results of that was a little bit staggering, but a little bit to be expected as well, too. Um, Cinebench pretty much was the, the game changer for me. Uh, you know, the, the 20 threads on the Intel platform just crushed everything that AMD had to offer. So I'm kind of interested to see what Threadripper would, would have done with this, with it being the same price point, um, as I'm comparing a $300 CPU to a $1,000 CPU. So. Uh, with that said, I think that the AMD 1700 kept up with as much performance it could give, but it just honestly wasn't enough to go against the 7900X. Firestrike, you know, gaming performance really was comparable, I would say. Uh, you know, the top end 8578 uh, was comparable to the 17203 uh, that the Ryzen system pulled out. I mean, we're talking 1300. 3D mark points difference between you know the, the two different systems and we're talking architectures and you know different things like that dual channel versus quad channel realistically uh, uh, the best is yet to come from Intel obviously and the best is yet to come from AMD with Threadripper uh, but I mean you're gonna see core counts you know coupling 18 cores with 36 threads I mean that's just insane but as of right now I mean the best performance ratio I'm gonna have to hand it to the AMD system because it's just a third of the price in power consumption I think this is another area where AMD really shines being a 65 watt part opposed to a 140 watt part um, realistically when their overclock is really where everything shines uh, at idle 82 watts compared to 140 watts from the Intel counterpart it's just almost half the wattage overclocked um, 182 versus 382 that's a 200 watt gap just CPU to CPU it's just insane that's just a lot of, of power to drive this deca core which is in own right awesome and multi threaded applications this is absolutely where the 7900x shined uh, it just obliterated the 1700 uh, to the point of it took half the render time of the stock configuration it is just a beast at video rendering in other benchmarking applications like cpu bench uh was decent but again not enough to make up the difference to um justify the pricing of it so uh in terms of max temperatures uh, as you see from the slide before uh, it got a little toasty it is a little bit of a furnace um, and that's with two radiators on it with a uh Entermax new change of 300 milliliter uh, reservoir on the, in the loop as well too. Just the CPU is being cooled. So, I mean, we're, we're talking a 360 and a 220 radiator trying to cool this beast and it still got up to 86 degrees. Now granted that was at 4.6 gigahertz, but <laughs> it still is a bit of a furnace. So I'm gonna still hand it to the, the 1700, but the 7900 is a beast of a CPU. 
So in conclusion, is the 7900X a CPU that a lot of people are going to be after? At $1,000, possibly, if you're looking for an alternative from Threadripper. Uh, with that said, in multi-threaded applications, Intel seems to do a little bit better at this moment, but Threadripper is relatively new. You're going to see a lot more BIOS tweaking in it, and I'd love to revisit this video with a Threadripper video to kind of compare against the 7900X to a Threadripper. Well, all right, guys, this is about do it for my review of the Intel Core i9-7900X. Uh, great CPU, a little bit on the pricey side, but uh, I think a, a high-end enthusiast, to be honest with you, is not going to uh, scoff the price if that's what you were looking for in terms of just staying with Intel. AMD has just entered the market back into the enthusiast game, so uh, I guess we will wait and see what's going to happen. This is Blue Devil with Overclock.net. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and do all those things. I'll see you guys in the next video.